So what you're saying is, when I thought it was one o'clock, it was actually two o'clock. And when I thought it was two o'clock, it was closer to three o'clock. <laughs> so, so you traveled back in time. I did, I did. And, uh, and as you can see, recently showered. <laughs> I really probably should keep the sunglasses on just for just for your own protection. Um, <clears throat> well, hello, welcome to the Inga Bark Show. Starting up a little late today. I apologize for that. It was an issue of time. I is it me or is the heat making you crazy? It's a hundred six today. By the way, there's no such thing as one hundred and six. I mean, there is, but it's not proper. Um, <laughs> it's 106, but it's uh, it feels like hell, right? You haven't spoken yet. You haven't said anything. <laughs> I once stated that the Bakersfield was where the devil goes to vacation. Yes, yes. I usually describe it annually as the uh, the time of year when uh, it's, it's like childbirth. You, uh, you forget how much it stinks until you have to do it again. <laughs> Speaking of childbirth, uh, my former doctor was uh, put on some level of probation today for, or yesterday or whenever, uh, by the medical board for some improprieties that he allegedly committed. Um, but he's not, but it's probation with the board, not with the law. So the, the I guess, so he will still continue to, to practice. Uh, Jason Hollowell, he used to be my doctor. <laughs> and you know what? If he was making passes at women, I'm offended. Uh, Why is that? Well, at least the doctor who delivered my, my oldest slapped me, on the, slapped me on the thigh and said, uh, pretty nice tan you got there. He also went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I wish him well. I, you know, the sad thing about the story as I read it today was that if uh, if he did if he did have improper uh, sexual relations with patients um, in his office, even uh, in hotel rooms, but in his office, he he was a partner with his wife in that business. And she was pregnant at one point. So I, I don't know, I, I just think it's all very, very sad and I'm sorry to hear about it, but uh, these things happen. I never had a bad experience. Whoa, I had one really, really bad experience with him. Otherwise, nah, things went, went pretty well. He made sure I'd never have babies again. And I'm very grateful. What? <laughs> And I'm very grateful. Speaking of things that break your heart, it is now being reported that this, this, uh, um, what's the grocery store? Trader Joe's. Mm. This guy down south, he's, have you heard the latest? It's, it's heartbreaking. When I heard it, I lost my breath. It, I actually exhaled and didn't inhale for a noticeable period of time. But this guy shoots his grandmother who raised him mm -hmm. seven times. And the last I read, she was still alive. And I believe he shoots somebody else. And then he uh, goes on the run, right? He's, he's on the lamb. Uh, he goes by foot to Trader Joe's. He's got the gun. He's got 50 people at least held hostage in that store. The police go in. Uh, LAPD goes in, they exchange gunfire with him. The young manager, she was 20, 20 something years old. The store manager was killed. And, and you know, I, I was driving down the road and I, or no, I was actually, I was at home when I heard that uh, it was actually an officer's bullet that killed her. Oh. I mean, I, you could probably hear me exhale uh, <laughs> if you were anywhere within 10 feet of me. That just hurts so much because you know and I know that 99.999% that, uh, of police officers 
They don't want to stop people from breathing. They don't even want to stop bad guys from breathing. They want justice. And so can you imagine the heartbreak for that family? I know she had a brother that I saw interviewed. Um, for that family and for that police officer. Oh. And, you know, to be fair to the police department, they didn't have to, they did not have to uh, tell us these things. Obviously, forensics, you know, proved it. But couldn't they have just swept it under the rug like they did in the 70s? Probably not. So anyway, there you go. There you go. Is there a term called Latin X? Could you look that up for me, Goose? Latin X? Latin X, all one word. Oh, Latin S. No, X. Latin X. Like X files. Okay. Because Latin. either it's a typo on the part of bakersfield.com, whatever that is, um, or it's a real word. So bakersfield.com is, uh, I don't know. Oh, the Bakersfield, California. Are you kidding me? Is it going to be another like LGBTQTRLMN? I, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure I got the spelling right. L A T I N X X is a gender neutral ah! term. Sometimes used in lieu of Latino or Latina. Oh, that is the. Latin American culture or racial identity. No, 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 no. The X replaces the standard AO oh. ending in Spanish or por in Portuguese forming nouns in the masculine and feminine genders, respectively. No, no, that's not English. It Spanish. might be Portuguese. It's not even Spanish. <laughs> it's, did you say Portuguese and? Uh, uh, ref, ref, referencing Latin American culture and restaurants. Okay, yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. In Spanish and Portuguese forming nouns of the masculine and feminine okay. genders, respectively. So, you, Spanish meaning from Spain. Uh, <laughs> my sister, who's a language fanatic would uh, say people from Mexico speak Mexican. They're not the same. I mean, people in Guatemala speak Guatemalan. Yeah, uh, what uh, a lot of people don't realize, and this is what I learned in my Spanish class in BC with a great professor who's Did you pass? Is, yes, barely. Who was the, who was the, the? I can't remember his oh. name. He was a great professor. Yeah. He was a great professor. Um, but he said that the dialects are different in in different Spanish countries mm -hmm. where in Spain it would can be done and said one way where in Mexico it is done another way mm -hmm. where in uh, Central America it's said another way okay but yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, is. So it, it just, is it's true when uh, when the late great Michael Barks went twice to Guatemala on a mission uh, missionary trip uh, they had to have a Spanish English to Spanish Spanish to Guatemalan translator <laughs> it reminds me of that episode and I Love Lucy. Which one? The one where Lucy's in trouble in France and oh. she needs a translator to be able to speak to her husband and they have to, you know, from France to German to German to <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> to Cuban. To, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It was, oh, that's awesome. I so love it. That's awesome. It, I find it interesting because I'm, I'm learning Spanish now and there, it's very, very... A O masculine mm -hmm. feminine exactly you cannot French is the same if you you know the E at the end is is feminine uh, in French yeah I didn't take French but so I, I happen to know that now that we've given today's uh, history uh, so, uh, yes uh, what is Latinx why well, you brought this up for okay. a okay uh, according to the paper um, Supervisor Perez had a rally today mm -hmm. I was there. And supporters of the supervisor planned the rally to escort her as she walked into the Board of Supervisors meeting on Tuesday. That's awesome. I think that's cool. I'm glad she has supporters. Leticia is a very nice person. 
and um, if she is supervisor Perez is guilty of something let it be known if she's not guilty of something let it by all means be known because when you are a high-profile person uh, much is expected of you it's tr it's true um, and being above reproach is pretty important. Supporters, uh, this is okay. Uh, last week, district attorney charged her. The meeting Tuesday will be her first appearance at a supervisor's meeting since the charges were filed. Can you imagine sitting up there on that panel with those supervisors? Uh, Kern, Inyo, and Mono County Central Labor Council are supporting her. So, uh, unions and the Dolores Horta Foundation. See, this is when I get frustrated. The only voice of the Latinx community on the Board of Supervisors has been stifled, the foundation wrote on a Facebook, on Facebook. So, um, you know, we return to the fact that, um, uh, how do I say this? Like I said, if she's guilty of something, let it be known. If she's not, by all means, let it be known. But playing the race card just really makes me annoyed. And learning a new word, Latin X. Oh, shut up, Dolores Huerta. Uh, or as I've trained people to call her, Huerta. Uh, just shut up. That's so ridiculous. But uh, it reminds me of that governor. Who was that governor in, was it New Jersey? It was New Jersey. I am a gay American. What? Does that make me a blonde American? It makes me a fat American. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> There's a reason the computer is right, hopefully killing your view of my, of my body. Uh, anyway, so I, it just, I just hate, I, I just think the, the race card is cheap. And the fact that, you know, for instance, I went to a, um, a high school board meeting a couple months ago or a month or so ago, and the, one of the Hispanics who stood up said uh, to the board, including Jeff Flores, Flores, with an S though, so maybe he's a Spaniard or a Portuguese, Port he could be Portuguese. Mm -hmm. With the S, like Nunes. Um, anyway, uh, uh, he wants, uh, this, this Hispanic woman stands up and says, none of you look like me. And for that, uh, because none of them look like her, they can't represent her. That was basically what she was saying, which I think is racist. Now, in my neighborhood where I live, uh, I have a very long street. It changes names. It's so long. Yeah, it changes names like uh, starts out as one name, turns to a second name, and then turns to a new name. <laughs> it's so long. And my neighborhood, uh, there's maybe five white people. So, am I am I misrepresent or unrepresented? I mean, if 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 the uh, Sikh community wanted to take over my area, which they are, uh, which I love Sikhs, so it's okay with me. But uh, would I dare if I stood in front of them at a meeting and said, "None of you look like me"? Can you imagine what would happen? So. Anyway, I, I find that, I find the race card, and I'm not pinning that on Leticia either, uh, or on Supervisor Perez. She, uh, these people are supporting her. I'm not, that doesn't mean to me that she's accepting um, their support, but I don't care. I just, I, I, I just, it just to me is a negative Nelly. Now you were at, uh, what, today's meeting or yesterday's meeting? Yes. <laughs> I was at uh, last night's budget meeting uh, to take pictures, and uh, it was interesting. I actually stood up and spoke. Yeah, you did, and yeah. and a uh, ni very nice Hawaiian shirt. You actually had it buttoned. Well, it was a polo type shirt, so oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it was buttoned. Because usually your button up shirts are just you 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 layer like I do. Yes. 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 So, um, in. 
a lot of it had to do with I mean, the, the biggest complaint that, that what was getting um, was that 60% of the budget is going toward, you know, uh, for public safety, which included, you know, uh, police and fire. Yeah. Which I'm like, okay, yes, I, yeah. I like that idea. I, I absolutely support that. But well, there were people that were coming in and they were more or less complaining, saying that public safety also had to do a lot of uh, uh, public works. The public mm -hmm. works office, uh, potholes, street lights. Oh my gosh, potholes. Street We've lights. Got, my neighborhood has potholes. They just resurfaced like two, two weeks ago, or two months ago, and there's potholes. <laughs> there, and that, and, but the, you're right. That and that's a safety issue. It's a safety but issue. when we think of public safety, but at the same time, I think that uh, I mean I would say that law enforcement, roads, you know, infrastructure are what I want government to do. Fire, mm -hmm. uh, uh, law enforcement, infrastructure. Otherwise, I, I pretty much want them to leave me alone. And I was thinking today, I wonder how many special programs there are at the county level that are funded by taxpayer dollars. I wonder how many um, uh, uh, retirement funds, you know, they're having to cover because it's, it's, it's hurting. Well, you know. So if, if, if I'm, if I'm pay, asked to pay more in taxes for the purpose of public safety, that's, that means to me that the public safety money was given to somebody else. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. I mean, my whole point was is that, you know... You were mad. Well, I, I wasn't mad. mad you were mad. indignant. I was upset. Mm -hmm. I mean, let me put it like, because some of the people they were starting to add on was like libraries, community centers. <laughs> yeah. and, See? I, and, and I'm like, what does that have to do with public because safety? Because if a community center is built, then young people won't steal because they'll be busy playing ping pong and... Uh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, foosball. Foosball. And yeah. busying themselves. Uh, yeah, we call that the the uh, police activities league. Yeah. <laughs> it's and it's it's funded by donations. But my whole thing was is that you know we I live in Oildale, mm -hmm. and the last two or three years, and I, I said this, Sorry. we uh, we've had an uptick in homelessness. Squatters, there's panhandlers, um, crime is, is on the rise. Absolutely, in my neighborhood too, and I, I'm a southwesterner. Yeah, and, and I, I, I was basically like, you know, I want to see a few more officers on the road. My whole thing is the fact that when you know the phrase, when the when the cat's away, the mice will play. Yes. Yeah, the, the the criminals know that we don't have enough cops to cover the street. Oh yeah. So sure. so they're coming out in droves to to. to do all these petty they know crimes. How long it, they know how long it takes to commit a petty oh, yeah. crime. The guy who was arrested in the parking structure, was it the, the parking structure downtown? He'd bro broken into, what, five cars, including the one belonging to the district attorney, which is hilarious. Uh, he knew you can smash and grab pretty fast. Yeah. It'll take the police much longer to get there. Why commit a big crime, you know? Yeah, and it, it just kind of, and I, my whole thing was I would like my wife to go to the grocery store with, and be safe and not have yeah. to be harassed by, by people looking for money or, or or whatever. And I feel I feel for these people, but uh -oh. you know what? There are programs that will help you out. Yeah, there are. Yes, there there actually are a lot of programs that can help you out. Um, in fact, yesterday I was, I was, I always carry, you know, like if I have a, a, a can or a bottle of water, you know, whatever, I always carry a spare, so like the gallon jugs, uh, so that if I think somebody looks like they're overwhelmed, you know, I'll, I'll I have that to give them. I, but I, you know, I wonder if people would trust me. So I started buying the packs that are covered in plastic. That way they see me take it out and give it to them, you know. Um, I, last week alone, I saw two broken down cars and, a, uh, and an accident. 
within just a couple miles of each other. Um, I drive home and I didn't have any water and I felt really bad because there were children standing outside of these cars, you know, in the heat. It was horrifying. But yesterday I was approached by a man. Actually, I approached him because he was digging through trash cans for recyclables. And I always keep recyclables in my car because I just throw them in the back seat of the Jeep because nobody rides there anymore. And, uh, and I have them at the ready should I run into somebody digging in the trash cans, right? I'm a team player. So I give this guy the recyclables I had, which wasn't a lot. Now he's shirtless, I would say in his 50s. And he's shirtless and he's got his pants, his shorts so low that you can see that muscle right there. Yeah, that's not good. Mm -hmm. no. I don't understand why men get to walk around without a shirt. Tr seriously, men, don't, don't walk around without a shirt. It's really not appealing unless uh, you are, of course, certain people. But any old who, um, and I could make a list. So I, so I walk up and I hand him the, the recyclables. And you know what he says to me? I said, do you take plastic? And he said, that's not all I do. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. And then he said, this is all you've got? This is all you're going to give a homeless man? <laughs> I was like, what? What, what on earth is happening here? Usually because I know they're trying to make money because they're picking up collect uh, recyclables, usually they're pretty gracious in accepting what I have to offer. And I usually, usually offer to also buy them a Gatorade, a banana, something with potassium. I think potassium's important. This guy though, didn't even give me the chance. As I'm walking into the store, he's yelling, this is an insult. You insult me. <laughs> <laughs> How did this happen? What? When did the world get like this? So I posted the story on Facebook, and I have a hundred plus responses from people who've told me homeless people have thrown food at them, have complained when they bought them a hamburger that there was no cheese on it. <laughs> My son tells me a story about when he was down south and a woman in a postal uniform, which I think is against the law if you're not a right. post office worker, I, I believe that's against the right. law, uh, in a postal uh, out ensemble with a, a gas can and she was asking for money to fill her tank so she could get home from work. My son gives her money. Now see, my standard would be, sure, let's go to the gas station. I'll get, I'll get you some gas mm -hmm. and we'll go put it in your car. Uh, my son wasn't thinking in those terms. Next day, he goes to the same store and the same woman is doing the same thing. You know what he did? He stood next to her and told people. <laughs> But I didn't know this was so prevalent. It's never happened to me. Has it ever happened to you that somebody was an ingrate? Once, and and it was years, years ago. We were. I was with my. Oh, in when people were really homeless. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and this happened in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And I was with. Well, people my have always been homeless in the Bay Area. And so we're walking into a grocery store. And this guy asked me for, you know, you know, you have any money? And I gave him a dollar. And the guy goes, Well, don't you have a ten? And I almost said, well, then give me my dollar back. <laughs> yeah. If you yeah. don't need it that bad, I'll just take my dollar back. Yeah, I, I actually thought this guy was going to hit me. And in fact, I, I went into the store, I bought myself a Gatorade, and <laughs> walked back out of the store, got into the Jeep, which, by the way, has incredible air conditioning. And, um, and I sat there for a second looking for him because I'd seen him walk behind the Jeep. And then I didn't see him on the other side, but he was on the other side. And I thought, oh my gosh, he, he's gonna punch my window in. I mean, that's how mad this guy was. So anyway, I've never, I have never had that experience before, but apparently a lot of you have. And uh, that's really too bad. One person on my Facebook made a comment about how these are the things that make you not wanna give. And I don't think that's true. Every person's different. It was really hot yesterday. He's miserable. You know, he's pushing his stolen shopping cart, <laughs> you know, uh, around, and he's, uh, and he's mad. Heat makes people mad. But you know what heat doesn't do? 
I'll tell you on the other side of this break. How's that for a, a, a what do they call it? Cliff Transition. Note. Oh, cliff, cliffhanger. cliffhanger. Yeah, how's that for a cliffhanger? I will tell you what he does to people according to an incredibly scientific, not really, uh, study. We'll be right back. I'm Inga. At the time you were arrested, you were served with a DS-367 temporary driver's license. It's good for 30 days, but if you don't act within 10 days, at the end of those 30 days, your license will be suspended. It's important for your lawyer to contact the DMV for you, set up a driver's license administrative hearing so that your license is not going to suspension. That's something here at Braymer Law we do for you. Introducing the new California State Penitentiary Bologna Sandwich. Jail food sucks. Don't let your family eat jail food. Your home is perfect. Until. It's not. We understand that life has its changes. As your family grows, we're here to help grow with you. Because taking care of your family is important to you and important to us. Your story starts here with Cornerstone Mortgage. of what time? <laughs> exactly. I don't know if it's the heat. It can't be because unlike the guy who yelled at me yesterday, my house is at 78 all the time. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's certain things you're willing to pay for. You know, like I, I won't, I, I, I'm a skimp, skimpy, skimper, skimperson. Mm -hmm. I'm a Walmart uh, uh, Winco gal all the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Winco. I love Winco too, but you know, sometimes, like my son the other day, he was on his way to Winco when he broke his, his flip flop. So he had to go to Walmart to buy a shoe. And then he went back to Winco for his shopping. <laughs> That's great. Uh, this just in uh, Fair Political Practices Commission is investigating DA elect Cynthia Zimmer. Now, uh, one might think that maybe the Leticia Perez thing is meant to distract you from the DA's office, but Lisa Green endorsed Spielman. So that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think Lisa Green is Jewish. I, 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 can we put an X at the end of that or... The Fair Political Practice Commission is investigating Kern County District Attorney-elect Cynthia Zimmer. The Fair Political Practice Committee um, Commission, excuse me, uh, released, also known as the FPPC, uh, released documents yesterday outlining the investigation into Zimmer. This is from who's the source? Where'd you get this? Uh, Twenty Three News. Okay, Scripps Media. Um, okay, hat tip, Twenty Three News. They have a number of ordinances, local ordinances, including Measure K, uh, that have been violated uh, allegedly. The letter from the FPPC names Ken Mettler as the complainant. <laughs> Ken's always willing to be a troublemaker. I love that man. Uh, in fact, the last time I had really good sushi was with him. I need some really good sushi, Ken. Uh, the complaint was filed against Zimmer along with Zach Scribner, uh, Brian Williams, uh, Zimmer of Kern, Co uh, Kern County uh, District Attorney, Kathy Abernathy, Western Pacific Research. What? 
Western Pacific research. You know what? Every I, I would say safely that about every other. Yeah, oh, and it's related to Kevin McCarthy as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Every other election that uh, that these if you, oh, think about this. Now I know a lot of you are big fans of Kevin. I I am t I am to a degree like him so much. Um, <laughs> uh, he's going to be our next speaker, so uh, it is what it is. Uh, but I, I've been telling people for 20 years about the games these people play. And every couple of, of elections, if you think about it, uh, they've run people who were uh, uh, selling, arrested for selling meth. <laughs> They've run people for office who have uh, broken into a competitor's uh, uh, computer to steal conversations. And this community laughed at me. These guys do so much crooked crud that I can't keep up with it. Now, I don't know if, this is, if these allegations are true. I hope they're not. But they're also not uh, prison sentence illegal, like what Leticia Perez is being, uh, to is being called on. They've been fined so many times because you know what? What matter does it make if Kathy Abernathy and her late husband and Western Pacific Research uh, had to pay tens of thousands in fines to the Fair Political Practice uh, Commission? Do you know how much money they make off of every win they have? Because that winner is going to endorse all of their other clients. And she made sure, it's funny too, because I've only met Cynthia Zimmer once, one time, right out there, and she said to me, I just want to make sure you know, I'm not associated with Western Pacific Research. So, anyway, I hope it's not true, as I do with everybody of high profile. I always hope they're all not guilty. But this is nothing new. Just go back in time. I don't know. What can just did Google take the place of Nexus Lexus? I thought it was a, De a, a DeLorean, an '85 DeLorean that could go back in time and get 80 <laughs> miles an hour. I remember, I remember saying to, uh, I was uh, sitting with Hannity uh, during a, a, a radio break. Uh, we were talking, and and he said, "You don't have Nexus Lexus." And I was like, what is this Nexus Lexus? Apparently it's a really good search engine for uh, news stories, or it was before Google, I don't know. But Google decides what it wants you to know. But if you were to Google Western Pacific Research Fair Political Practice Commission, you will find a slew over the years of accusations like this. They've, ha they've had candidates go to jail All right. So it's uh, no surprise that McCarthy stays as far away from them as he possibly can. Uh, Washington D.C. I hear as far. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good jump. It's a pretty good, pretty good, pretty good leap. Yeah. Well, thank you for getting me all riled up and, and annoyed now. You're very welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much. I just, I can, I can remember in my mind how many times the newspaper. In, member, in this big of print, or not this big of print, but in this big of an article said, and Western Pacific Research has been accused by fair political practices. I remember one time there was a little tiny, tiny, tiny article about the In God We Trust. Remember, the, if they were still around, In God We Trust, Jackie Sullivan, Jesus, Butterflies. Um, she's my city council member. Um, anyway, uh, uh, Jackie's great, great, she's a good person, she's a sweet person, but I remember seeing a, just a little tiny thing about one of their fundraisers, this was years ago, they were having a fundraiser, and they do every year, they have a fundraiser for In God We Trust, and they said in this very small article that part of, in, part of the fundraising money, or the money was to go to, paying the board, compensating the board of In God We Trust. I know. I, I know. 
you know, this is why I, I this is why I can't be on a board of a nonprofit. I was on the board of Right to Life for quite some time, and most of the time we spent. Um, trying to come up with ways to pay the person who did the actual work. And she really did counsel people and take phone calls and, and help folks and keep an office available for, pe for young women. Um, but that's all we did. But in this case, I did a quick search of the board members of In God We Trust. Guess who was on the board? Guess. Guess the Abernathy. No, but her husband was. <laughs> I took a flight. I took a leap. And every year they bring in great speakers for this event, probably because because McCarthy helps them out, I would guess. And every year they have a great crowd who all believes that they're uh, doing something to get in God we trust in everybody's uh, courthouses, which they've done a pretty good job. Uh, Jackie Sullivan has uh, has done a pretty good job lobbying different communities for that purpose. But uh, just know. <laughs> when you pay your money, it's it's the same with some of the cancer uh, organizations. Th those relays for life are so expensive. Anyway, but when you see the guy's name, he's he's Jackie Sullivan. He was Jackie Sullivan's political consultant. Ran her campaigns, got her endorsed by all of his candidates and the supervisors. Got her to endorse other candidates, got her to endorse his candidate for mayor, uh, got his candidate for mayor to endorse her and supervisors. And do you see, do you see the mm -hmm. cluster? It's a family tree. It's a family tree. It is a family tree. So anyway, I just, uh, I just had to mention that. Bakersfield, um, a new wallet hub study. Wallet hub is decent. I think at their studies, but this is this is from KBFX uh, KBAK. Uh, congratulations to them on finding this one. A new Wallet Hub study finds Bakersfield ranks fourth least educated city in America. Do you know what that means? That means uh, that that means Goose and I are are a rare commodity in being educated. That is true. Why don't we make more money? <laughs> I mean, anyway, a new Wallet Hub study finds Bakersfield the fourth, fourth least educated city in America. And I saw that and I thought, well, what are they talking about? Are they talk? Well, you always have to find out what questions did they ask? You know, what were they, everybody who took statistics, you, the first word that comes into your head is probably variables or maybe degrees of, uh, what's that? degrees of points you know uh, see I usually go with variables but uh, stati uh, statistically speaking within one point or percentage of you know that kind of stuff give and take right right so give or take thank you that's what we officially called it in, in college uh, following uh, Bakersfield is McAllen Edinburgh Mission Texas Brownsville, Harlingen, Texas. That's funny because they're making good money down there. Mm -hmm. And they're not taxed as high as we are. And the least educated in America is Visalia and Porterville, California. <laughs> Yay, yeah. Valley! Yeah, I, I think the first, question, <laughs> the first question I gotta ask is what they, do they mm -hmm. determine to be an education? Ah. That is exactly what you need to ask because I clicked where it said to find out more on the study, click here. Here's how they measured it. How many minorities attend college versus white people? How many women attend college versus men? And what was the other one? Uh, let's see, the gaps they call them. Uh, education attainment, uh, let's see. Uh, we are, uh, they gave us 20 points, I don't know. No, they didn't, they gave us 4.4. Quality of public school system, uh, we got a 4.44%. Average quality of universities, well, we only have one. <laughs> How can you average the quality of one university? Okay, uh, enrolled students, 
per capita based on race. Uh, number of learning opportunities per capita, uh, gender gaps, education quali uh, equality. Education equality? What is education equality? You and you, you sit in this lecture room in Dorothy Donahue Hall, Dorothy Donahue Hall, for the next three hours, I'm going to lecture to both of you, but you learn nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you can't take notes. No, no, no recordings. Um, and don't ask any questions. So that's what it was based on. A note, the Education Equality Index is a comparative measure of achievement gap between students from low-income families as measured by participation in the free and reduced priced lunch programs. Hmm? What does that have to do with I education? Have no I, I, I have no idea. So, uh, and we, are you kidding me? We give them free lunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, when I was a kid, you got lunch at best. Well, no, that's all you got. And I didn't, I qualified uh, at one point in elementary school for the free lunches. I chose to work in the cafeteria instead and earn my lunch. But uh, I don't begrudge anybody else taking advantage of it. And good grief, the waste. No. Oh my gosh. Don't you, don't you think that the, the uh, gleaners could, would, would appreciate some of those leftovers? Nope, gotta be thrown away. My son, Joshua, who's just cute as can be, he was suspended for one day. You know what he did, Goose? He gave somebody his food. He dug sealed milk cartons out of the trash. Huge milk milk drinker, my kid. And he thought it was an incredible waste. He was sent home. And how much <laughs> how much of our tax dollars are going down with it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. At least it's milk. It kind of kind of uh, you know, my mother used to say it helped the medicine uh, helped your your stomach uh, take in the medicine a little bit better. Which was true back in the time when you had a toothache and your mom put a real aspirin on the tooth. <laughs> Did you do that? I was lucky that didn't happen to me. That didn't happen to you? No. Nope. So you also didn't experience aspirin? I don't know if I it don't still remember. Exists. Yeah, I don't know if it still exists, but when I was a kid it was the greatest thing for a sore tooth or a sore throat. And it was, you know, you know, you don't give children aspirin anymore. But it worked for me. Look how I turned out. <laughs> All right. So there you go. We are the fourth least educated city in the country, beat out by Visalia and Porterville. Which has a college. Yeah. Well, they don't have uh, a university. They do not. They, they, they have a junior college. They have, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there's all kinds. They can go to Fresno State. Well, no. Porterville, they're, lucky they're better off coming here. But we have satellite schools mm -hmm. from the university, uh, from Cal State. So, I don't know. Which is interesting because uh, I read not too long ago that uh, CSUB is actually uh, one of the, I think, in the top 100 schools of affordability. No, yeah, I would. In, according to Forbes. Uh -huh. So I don't, I, I don't know what they mean by quality of university. <laughs> I got my education there, and a lot of people other. I got uh, my education there. My son's finishing his master's there, uh, and look how it's worked out for me. <laughs> I crack my little self up. All right, I almost gave you guys a phone number. Um, so that's that was reported by KBFX. I thought that was uh, that was very interesting. And here's one. So this is actually very funny. So if it's judged by the spelling in the local paper, <laughs> I can see why we rank so low. <laughs> That's awesome. I used to. I don't. I don't read the paper anymore, um, unless there's something online that I access. But I, I, you know, I and I, I've never had a, a prescription to it. My husband did, 
but I, I didn't. But you know, you, when you work in, in this industry, there's always a paper line around somewhere. And I used to get such a kick out of the way people spell things. I remember a, a, a one advertisement for a car that had an extended cab. And I knew, I knew that whoever wrote that really believes that's how you pronounce a a a extended. It really does. There's a local guy who used to be the, the uh, used to be the, uh, what, CEO at the Bakersfield Californian. Uh -huh. I heard him say et cetera once. I heard it, et cetera. It's et cetera. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Scientists have found a disturbing link between suicide rates and climate change. Oh. <laughs> so this is the new, this is the new thing. Uh, climate change causes people to kill themselves. Now, you know, I think about that, that homeless guy yesterday. He was hot. And heat makes people annoyed, you know, so he might be a really nice guy. He just wasn't in that moment. And I, I look back to, uh, I wasn't born, but the, uh, what was down by USC, uh, the Watts riots, mm -hmm. 1960s, hot, hot, was that July or August? It was really hot. And sometimes, you know, heat contributes, they think, scientists say, to, uh, to people's behavior, aggressive behavior, stuff like that. I totally get that because I want to punch everybody I see on the walk from this building to my car. Yeah. But uh, it's because of climate change. If you've lived in a region of northern hemisphere that has not experienced record-breaking heat waves this summer, consider yourself lucky. I don't know if it's record-breaking, but it's hot. Um, the U.S., the U.K., Japan, northern Europe, western Europe, China, and Mexico are all suffering from abnormally hot and dangerous summer temperatures in 2018. Well, wait a minute. California has already met the 2020 standards for uh, for uh, what carbon emissions and and alternative uh, uh, energy sources. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not my fault. Must be those Oregon people. Uh, the vast majority of climate scientists agree that climate change is making these extreme temperatures more intense and more frequent. That's okay. That's okay because when they weren't measuring or when they didn't know how to measure, they also didn't have air conditioning. Now we do. And you know, sometimes they put those, uh, they put those, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the measures of, uh, of uh, the temperature. Thermometers? Yeah, the thermometers. I remember they had one once at the tarmac at the airport. Oh, that's going to be an accurate telling of, <laughs> of the weather. Put it on black asphalt. <laughs> she whiz. Uh, now a groundbreaking new study has found a disturbing link between climate change, extreme temperatures, and suicide. By comparing temperature and suicide... What? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like leaning away. He's like, uh, either he's incredibly bored or he can't believe what he's hearing. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Uh, by comparing temperature and suicide data from thousands of U.S. counties and Mexican municipalities over several decades, the study has revealed strong evidence that hotter weather increases suicide rates. And now I, have, I actually don't have a big problem with accepting that. What I have a big problem with is another tool in the tool belt of the crazy, wacky Jerry Browns of the world. Driving your car is making people kill themselves. No, maybe depression and despair. You, you see, the, there was something that I was told the first day of class in, in statistics. Mm -hmm. Correlation does not mm -hmm. mean confirmation. Mm -hmm. Just because two things go together mm -hmm. doesn't mean that they cause each they other. Cause each other. Yeah, correlation and causation. Yeah, yeah, that's it's very true. I did uh, one study in um, in statistics amongst a uh, probably a hundred students, and I presented some 
with a picture of a woman who I had dressed as a tramp. Took a picture of her. Now, when I say tramp, I mean, you know, like back in the 80s when they said, well, what was she wearing when she was attacked? You know, that kind of just short skirt and, you know, lots of makeup. And then I gave another group the uh, same woman with no makeup dressed for Sunday church. And then I told them the story of her rape. Guess, guess what? Guess what human nature said? Human nature said Sunday morning gal was definitely raped. Human nature said uh, the girl in the short skirt was probably not raped. And I mean, that's like, that's like a jury couldn't, you, you, that wouldn't be legal. You know, you can't do that kind of stuff. But I did it and human nature remains the same. So what, where did I get, oh, correlation. Good. There was a be, that's a good study. Yeah, it was. It was really interesting because they were all college seniors um, in the psychology department. They were all college seniors in the psychology department. Oh, she had it coming. <laughs> I should have kept that. Tells you how educated they were. Well, according to <laughs> Wallet Hub, they aren't at all. Uh, <laughs> no word as to whether women, uh, women with shorter skirts, have this equal access to a college education. In all, the researchers found that if the world warms by 2.5 degrees Celsius, what are we, Celsius or Fahrenheit? I thought we were Fahrenheit. Are we? No. Are, I always forget. All I know is. Uh, it's not the same in other countries. And the only other country I've been to besides Canada and Mexico is Israel. And man, that, that air conditioning was really hot that one night on the Mediterranean. I ended up just sleeping on the beach uh, because my room was so hot. And that's when it was explained to me. <laughs> yeah. You kept turning it up? Well, yeah, I kept turning it up. I had it down to 36. <laughs> oh. uh, all in all, researchers found that in, in a world, in, if the world warms by 2.5 degrees Celsius by 2050, 32 years from now, oh, I won't be alive anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, it could result in a 1.4 percent increase in the Americans in the American in American suicide rate, and a 2.3 percent increase in Mexico's suicide rate. I get it in Mexico. Uh, let's see. After taking into account. Let's see, uh, uh, after taking into account population growth and no less than 30 climate models, the researchers predicted that hotter temperatures could result in an additional 21,000 suicides by 2050. Because you drive a car, because you light a fire, because you exhale. You're so selfish. Because you grow food because your co your cows pass gas. I don't know if you have any cows, but if you do, uh, they're methaning everything up. Because you don't recycle. Mm -hmm. Pelicans eat your styrofoam containers. <laughs> and that's caused global warming? No, wait, I, uh, I can't keep track anymore. I seriously, I can't keep track anymore. So there you go. Now, according to this study, um, this, the rate of suicide might go up by 21,000 by 2050, by 2050. If our temperatures go up by two and a half degrees, don't our temperatures go up and down and up and down and up and down? Mm -hmm. So anyway, there you go. Have I bored you sufficiently with that story? Shall I go back to Cal State? Well, <laughs> if I want to get educated, gee, honk and whiz. All right. Um, on a more serious note, well, what could be more serious than your driving your car causing people to die, kill themselves? That would just be like weird, wouldn't it? You're driving down the road in the Jeep, which gets 18 miles to the gallon, sometimes 14. And I got my AC all cranked up because it's an awesome AC. And I'm just 
I got the the two uh, the other blowers in the car closed, so it's all on me. It's we we just got the air conditioning in our car fixed at just the right time. Oh yeah, you got it. In big. I I saw people today with the you know old trucks or uh, older cars. Windows are all rolled down, and I was like, no, it, it, I don't think it helps. I don't know, but uh, woofta. Anyway. Um, yeah, wouldn't it be weird if you're driving down the road, if I'm driving down the road in a Jeep and people start stabbing themselves in the neck? <laughs> you did this to me! Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, can I buy you a snow cone? Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. So anyway, on a more serious note, um, I've received an, an article from my friend Jim, uh, Jim Corey. He writes for himself. He's a pretty good writer. And uh, I've never met him in person. I've interviewed him, and, and we know each other. We're Facebook friends. And he gave me an, he sent me an article or posted an article that I've really been chewing on and thinking about because I don't want to be too hysterical, if that's the, the appropriate word, and I don't know if it is. But um, it, it's a piece about white genocide in South Africa. Now, I've heard bits and pieces from people, you know, like, um, uh, what's his name? I love him when he fills in for, for Rush Limbaugh. He's a, is he British? Is he a New Zealander? Oh, uh, I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Love him. Love him. He's very, very witty and still makes a point. I've heard him talk about how in, like, 19, uh, 1996, the leadership under, uh, I think, Mandela was still alive, uh, actually voted to that that the government can just take white people's land just take it and I so I've heard scant stories about this but I I really wanted to um, investigate it because I I don't know what it means I found a couple of stories on uh, white farmers being uh, being murdered and their wives and children being raped and murdered but one article I found said that it, it also happens to black farmers. And the reason it happens to farmers is because they're rural. They're out in the middle of nowhere in a patch. So they're easy to, they're easy to be preyed upon. So that argues against the uh, white genocide idea. But I found another story of a particular leader in South Africa of some sort who actually gave a speech, a public speech, in which he called on uh, black people to kill white people. So, I, so I'm still looking into it. There's a documentary called Farmland that I've been putting off watching, but I'm, I'm going to watch it. I don't know which side it takes, but it's the only thing I could find on the subject, so I'll be watching that. It wasn't on Netflix. i got to watch it on YouTube or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I could control YouTube on my TV, can't I? If I can control Netflix on my TV, do I have to pay for YouTube? No, it, de it depends on, uh, on how you're streaming. It's an icon that comes up as a choice, but yeah, I don't know. I know that uh, uh, oh. on my PS4, yeah. um, I can click on it and and you get YouTube through my PS4. That's how my son watches TV. Yeah, yeah. You should be able to do it just fine. Okay, all right. Well, Al although although using the typing feature on that for YouTube is can be a pain in the yeah. neck. Well, I just I I I'm not I'm adverse to watching it on this laptop unless I'm or whatever this is called Chromebook unless I'm on a uh, uh, like on a camping trip and I have no other choice so uh, but anyway it's called farmland I'm gonna look into it more um, I I tend to believe the story is true and the reason is because uh, South Africa is a horrible horrible uh, place I mean there's murders there's terrorists there obviously was a history of um, of apartheid, you know, that America did not come up against. We didn't come out against it. Reagan did not denounce it for strategic reasons. It's for the same reason that we don't acknowledge the Armenian genocide because Turkey is a pass through for us, and down around the, the dang bottom of Africa was uh, was you know we needed to get from the Gulf 
right? So it's sad, but it sometimes it is about the oil. So anyway, I just want to share with you that I'm looking into it. And I tend to believe it's probably true. Uh, I mean, look, it wasn't but 20 years ago that the Hutus and the Tutsis, and we shall call our noble group the Tutsis, um, we will be feared across the land. Oh no, here come the Hutus. <laughs> anyway, I mean, they were cutting each other in half with machetes, right. it, full on. It, 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 is, it is a dark continent, so, um, for a reason. Did you ever have to read uh, Heart of Darkness? No. You just watched Apocalypse Now and got it over with? I, no, that would be more I, torturous. <laughs> actually, I have not seen Apocalypse Now. It is on my bucket list. Mm. So, I just want to watch it because it's considered one of the... You know, uh, ro uh, who is it who says he loves the smell of um, of uh, napalm in the morning? Who's that actor? I'll remember. Anyway, he's a bad he's a bad turkey. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I watched it once. Okay, so with that, I guess I got to get out of your hair to make room for, no, you know what I'm gonna do before Denise comes in? I'm gonna flip and sweep these floors. Actually, I was gonna go get a broom and do that too. <laughs> I was gonna bring my vacuum down here because I don't even know if a broom can do it. But there is a, you know, there's a broom closet down the mm -hmm. hall, so. Um, all right, kids, well, we'll follow the Cynthia Zimmer story. We will follow the, but I, I assure you, whatever they find at the end, if she's guilty of it, she's just gonna have to pay a fine. And that fine goes to a government entity. So, yay. I, I, don't you love it whenever there's a lawsuit and uh, the government ordered so-and-so to pay, uh, you know, and you go, well, where did that money go? It's like the lottery money. Where does that money go? Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Oh, you've got a great show coming up on Friday. I won't, I won't say what. Oh, yes, uh, I have some lethal weapon news. <laughs> you know, it aired this weekend on AMC. Oh, the, the first one? First, second, third, fourth. Oh, the whole series. Yeah, I only got past the second. Once Joe Pesci shows up, I'm kind of over it. But uh, I did realize, and I admitted this freely on my Facebook page, I did realize for the first time in 30 years that Lethal Weapon actually has a plot. See, all I ever saw was Mel Gibson's bottom, uh, Mel Gibson with his shirt open, Mel Gibson in a rage, Mel Gibson choking people with his little short legs, yeah, shirtless. Yeah, Danny Glover did his part too. When he's in the white, when he's in the wife beater, he's got some arms. He's got some guns on him. Uh, but uh, you know, so anyway, that's. That's my big news about Lethal Weapon. Mm -hmm. But you have better news, news that makes me happy. Yes, yeah, so it's, uh, I won't really talk about it, but it's yeah. about the TV show and- um, I, I couldn't watch it, never. And how a, uh, a certain actor is no longer on the show. Hmm. I couldn't watch it because uh, uh, Damon um, Wayans- Damon Wayans. Does not look like Danny Glover to me. And whoever that guy was with the mustache, with the cheesy 80s mustache that was supposed to be Mel Gibson. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Which one is the one with Rene Russo? Is that one, two, or three? That's three, isn't That's it? That's three. Yeah, I also like it when, when he's showing her all of his uh, 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 bullet wounds, mm -hmm. scars. I, apparently she shows him some too, but I wasn't looking at her. So. Could we? Could I come in? We could talk all about Mel Gibson, <laughs> thirty-something Mel Gibson with a shirt off. Well, here's here's the other <laughs> here, here's the other tease that I'll give you. Uh, Tom Cruise has a new movie coming out Friday. Mm -hmm. It is the latest Mission Impossible. Uh -huh. and He's looking I, good. He's and looking I sharp. will review it. it oh, he, good. He. Uh, it looks like he's trying to be uh, the action star that he really wanted to be. Yeah. You know, well, he does a life. lot of his own stunts, right? Yeah. 
Um, I, I, you know, I think Tom Cruise is weird, but I like just about everything he does. He, a few good men. If you can, if you can separate, suspend reality. If you can separate the Tom Cruise the man, yeah, with Tom Cruise the actor, I can. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I judge people by what they offer me. I don't really look at uh, yeah but he's a weirdo but you know what the, it, it's this I feel the same way about the, the Mission Impossible movies the first of which was really good it was more high tech than the TV show when I was a kid where they just went like this and they had a totally different face you know that was awesome but um, but I, I feel the same way about that skyscraper movie with uh, what's his head oh Dwayne Johnson all he's all all the I'm sure he's a good actor. I've found him humorous at times, but uh, he was a tooth fairy once. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, I don't get all the CGI stuff. Give me, give me the Harry Hamlin, uh, uh, um, what's your majiggy with the mechanical outer? <laughs> give me the <laughs> what was that movie called? Uh, uh, Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans. Release the Kraken. I loved it. Virgis Meredith is fantastic. Give me the old school Sinbad, where he's fighting a clearly claymation, uh, you know, dragon or whatever it is he's fighting. I, I just can't take all the CGI. No, Dwayne the Rock, uh, whatever your last name is, Johnson. Mm -hmm. You cannot jump from a scaffolding to a building that's on fire and hold on by your fingers and live. But The Rock can't. Well, so can, apparently, so can Tom Cruise. <laughs> I mean, in that video, in the commercials, or the promo, uh, trailer, whatever, he's saying, I'm jumping out of a building to the British guy. Yeah. And uh, how, how's he even get a running, he doesn't even have a running start, and he somehow makes it to the other building. No. You disagree because you're a dude. No, trust me. There have been times, even even I when I watched because I also saw a skyscraper. Oh, you did. And I reviewed it. I liked it. Yeah, uh, I, I but, think it's nice even to I see was, what's her name back. But even I was kind of like when he made the first of all, he plays an amputee. Right, I noticed that because he uses his foot to hold him up in one of the right. Tra yeah. So uh, even I kind of was like. I was like, okay, I'll, no, no, no pun intended, but I was like, even I can make that leap. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, okay, maybe he could do it. You know, yeah. he's, he's got some training. Maybe I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But give me, give me Bruce Willis with bleeding feet. Yep. The first one was the best, and there have been pretty good ones too, but uh, the first one was was the best. I, I'm just old school, and that probably goes with my age, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it is hard to believe the stunts that they do because and and I even I I've watched Guardians of the Galaxy and liked it but realizing that so much of that time Chris Pratt is acting to a green screen mm -hmm. right and the little figures with things on them that that's actually impressive mm -hmm. that you can still act with nothing but uh, that, that just I, I lose what's interesting though is sometimes uh, they'll actually bring they'll actually bring Bradley Cooper out on the set just to deliver lines. He's been in some shirtless, I mean, some <laughs> movies too. <laughs> hey, I'm single. I'm too old for any of them. Let me see. The, the realization today, the realization that I had this weekend, that Mel Gibson, <laughs> thirty years ago, was considerably younger than I am now. That really hurts. <laughs> Renee just told me, don't waste your eyeballs. Don't waste my eyeballs on what? That Renee? must be the Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I'd rather watch the Scientology uh, uh, documentary that What's Her Name does. I think that's really good. But uh, you know what? Oh, last thing. I swear, last thing. I promise. Last thing. A&E has this new thing that they do, and I've seen it elsewhere, but mostly on A&E. They have the documentary about the child who was raised in a, a particular church, you know, and they're all very interesting. But what I've noticed is, instead of uh, instead of blurring out the faces of people, it's they scratch them off. 
It looks like it's an like an emoji or something that mm -hmm. they just put over the face. I've seen See, that too. That to me says, I'm really mad at this person. <laughs> Doesn't it? I just think of a fork, you know, going over their face. I don't I, like it. It's I, aggressive. I, I think it's a director's decision that to some do something new rather than than waste the the, 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 the money in the in the yeah. computer room blotting out even every face and just sit there with a coin and <laughs> yeah it looks like a lottery ticket yeah. scratch scratcher yeah i don't like that it's too aggressive and another thing i'm watching american pickers last night while whilst doing other things and uh they had a hawaiian they had a lamp with a topless hawaiian dancer and the her hips moved on the on the lamp and they sh showed it she's topless and they showed it and a little while later they find another lamp where the woman is topless and they blurt it out. Same show. I'm guessing one had nips shown. It was a nip slip thing. Yeah. And another thing. No, I'm kidding. I'm out of here. I'm toast. Tomorrow we will be uh, we'll be back here and in business and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll have a guest for you. But uh, oh. Yeah, we got to talk taxes. It's a pretty big deal, the local tax. War supervisors did put it on the ballot. So, uh, I will probably be voting against it, and that hurts. I'm gonna make a lot of people mad this year. <laughs> oh, what the heck. All right, kids, you have a fantastic day. Goose, thanks so much for keeping us afloat. I appreciate it greatly. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye.